Master is pacing. Where is he? Why hasn't he returned? We can no longer detect Peter's life force, Master. Oh, I hate this not knowing. We warned you this could happen if you tried the mental purge on your blood kin. You did not listen. Oh, I wish I had. <laughs> I'm not sure returning his memory was worth this trouble. Are you sure it's only temporary? By midnight, you should be fine. What do you sense out there? Your son is gathering forces against you, Master, as you expected. We cannot read anything beyond that. Only you, at full strength, could see something more specific. How about Trishna? Is she still alive? She is still alive, yes. She's pulling others toward herself. Shall we keep tabs on them? No, oh, bother. So long as she's alive, it won't matter what Alec does. We still have a back. Is there anything else before we depart? Do you sense nothing else? And that's it. It's up to them. They must make the first move. The elders bow their heads. Exterior, hidden cave, day. Abe, now apparently healed, and Alec receive a small cachet of weapons from a hidden, hidden cave. They load up a cart. There are swords, bows, arrows mostly, though there are a few weapons thrown in, including the parts of a cavalry. Exterior town day. A series of shots of Brian and Tricia approaching the villagers and quickly chatting with them. A few nod in agreement, while others back away and leave. Exterior field day. Brian, Tricia, and some of the recruits meet with Abe and Alec in a small field with a cart of weapons. Tricia approaches Abe, clearly surprised to see him. What happened? What did he do to you? I'm fine for the moment. Did he? Did he turn you? No, don't worry about that. He just gave me the time I need to go in my own way. Yeah. Tricia, I've been wrong about so many things. Made so many mistakes, so please trust me on this one. But I... a turns from her and joins Alan, who's trying to assemble the catapult. Trisha just watches him. Exterior field day. Series of training exercises coordinated by Alec with Abe and Trisha helping. Nobody's coordinated. It's almost embarrassing. The entire time, Brian stays off to the side watching separately. Brian wanders off while the training continues. Exterior castle day. Brian approaches the castle. He stops briefly, looks around, then enters the castle. Interior council chamber. The room is completely empty. Brian enters, looks around. What are you doing here? I wanted to see you again. Have you seen me? Are you happy? I think so. Have you decided, ma'am? I will be yours. There's nothing left for me. The master caresses Brian's face. Brian almost melts at her touch. A brief flash of light, and some fog appears between the master's hand and Brian's face. His eyes cloud over, then almost immediately clear again. You are mine. Go be with them and watch them. What you know, I should. Exterior, hillside, late afternoon. A grassy hill near the ruins of a church with the castle in view in the near distance. Alec emerges from the church and stops. Facing the castle, he beckons. A dozen men and women, including Brian, Abe, and Tricia, merge and join Alec. A few are pushing the catapult and a cart with a large, heavy canvas bag in it. Everyone is armed. Alec looks at them a moment, a ragtag group of children. He heads down the hill towards the castle. Everyone follows. Exterior castle. They all stop a distance from the castle. Alec, a couple of feet in front, Abe approaches Alec. What are you thinking? Point that catapult towards the window. How can you be sure? I've been inside, and that was enough for me. I'm heading inside. Get everyone coordinated and try to make the best of it out here. How will I know? You'll know when the time's right. Alec starts walking towards the castle. Abe watches him a moment, then turns and starts instructing the troops, ordering positions. Trisha watches Alec leave as well. Then after a moment, runs up and catches up to him. 
She walks beside him. He doesn't look over, but he knows she's there. You should stay. You're more useful to them. Why bother? They're all going to die anyway. I don't need your help. You assume too much. I can't just stand around and wait for something to happen. Are you, are you going to talk to them, work out a deal or something? Or something. Exterior castle wall. They approach the castle wall. The drawbridge is down, though the front gates are shut. They stop just before the bridge. I've never seen the gates closed. We're expected. How do you get inside? Out. There's a sudden gust of frigid wind coming from the gates, strong enough to push Alec and Trisha back. Trisha shivers, though Alec seems unaffected. Once they've taken a few steps back, the wind stops suddenly. Alec is unfazed. So Trisha is out of breath and still shivering. What the hell was that? Alec looks up at the parapet. Trisha looks up as well, standing on the parapet, looking down at them with a hood up to protect against the sun is the master. Return to the others. Prepare for the attack. What about you? Don't worry about me. Just go and buy me the time that I need. Alec walks forward again towards the gate. The master vanishes from the parapet. As she leaves, the gates shut her open. Alec steps through the open gates. Trisha stays there a moment. She takes a few steps forward, but the frigid wind picks up again, pushing her back. The gates shut her closed. The wind stops, leaving her shivering and alone. Slightly peeved, she turns and storms off. Interior, castle hallway. Alec enters the hallway and stops waiting. Vampire 4 emerges from the darkness without a word. Alec looks behind him to see Vampire 5 appear, blocking the exit. Vampire 4 turns and starts down the hallway. Vampire 5 gives Alec a light shove. Alec smiles slightly as he follows Vampire 4, while Vampire 5 follows behind Alec. Exterior castle. The group of fighters move closer to the castle, moving the catapult into position. A few of them lift the large canvas bag from the cart and carefully set it onto the catapult. It's heavy, and they're straining. Keep to your duties! The soldiers line up in formation lazily. Abe starts walking the line, checking them out. Exterior rear castle. Several vampires emerge from the castle, about four or five, and head off into the woods in a rush. Exterior castle. Abe, addressing the soldiers. There are times in our lives when we have to stand up, take back our homes and our lives. Exterior woods. The vampires are rushing through the woods fast. Now is that time for us, for all of us to reach out into the darkness, grasp the terrors that roam, and demand of them, leave us! Exterior oracles dwell. We must demand. Scream out into the darkness. Let us live. Let us be men! The oracle is seated before her fire, cup of tea in hand, her head lowered. After a moment, she raises her head and looks out. And rip back from the darkness the light that was stolen from us. The vampires arrive at the dwelling and crash through the doorway. The vampires rush down the small corridor and into the main chamber, snuffing out the fire and ripping the oracle to shreds. She does not put up a fight as they kill her and rip her place apart. And when the dawn finally breaks and we have taken back the night, only then, only then, will we stand free. Only then will we lead ourselves like the men that we are, free to govern ourselves, free to walk the night without fear, free to sleep in peace. We fight for that. We attack for that. Interior Oracle's dwelling. The main chamber is now empty. Blood everywhere. Shelves and everything else in ruin. It is deathly silent, unnaturally peaceful. Among the items on the shelves that have not been touched is the item that Alec had left with the oracle. Exterior oracle dwelling. The front door is lying ajar on its hinges. 
as unnaturally peaceful as the inside. A short path of boar can be seen leading from the front entrance out into the woods. Exterior castle. Abe is by the catapult, facing his men. Remember that. In the hours to come, what we fight for. As the horrors emerge from the darkness, stand tall. Stand true. Hold your ground and be men. Be free. Sir. Look! Abe turns to look up at the castle to see about a dozen or so vampires appeal up upon the battlements. Abe turns back to the men, sees a young soldier in his mid-teens looking on in terror. You, come here. Yes, sir. I have a job for you. Interior, council chamber. The elders are around the wall. The chamber is otherwise empty. Alan and the two vampires enter. So? Do I just wait here? No reply. A thick gray fog begins to fill the room from all sides. All the vampires leave the chamber as the fog begins to thicken. The fog has a shimmering, wavy light emanating from everywhere, and once the room is filled with it, sight is down to zero. <clears throat> Alex stands in place. He grips the hilt of his sword, but doesn't draw it. He's very aware of his surroundings, watching as much as possible. A dark shadow appears in the fog, shifting and moving about. It's the master. Alec turns around as the shadow moves, but stays in place. He draws his sword and positions himself to fight. Alec. The shadow suddenly jumps forward. Alec strikes out with his sword, but the master is too fast. Alec's sword only cuts through empty fog. <gasps> Exterior castle. The vampires are still up on the battlements. Abe is pacing back and forth before the terrified soldiers who are in line facing the castle. Trisha is in that line with a bow and arrow. Strike fast and true. They'll come at you fast from the darkness, and they'll not spare you for a moment before making you their final blow. So you must not pause even for a second. Sir! What is it? They're gone, sir. The battlements are now empty. Interior, council chamber. The fog is still thick. Alec is poised to fight. He now has a few scratches on his face. Some shallow, some almost healed, some quite deep. The master flashes forward. Alec strikes out with his sword, but misses again. There are now a few fresh scratches on his face. Show yourself. Let's fight like the honorable warriors that we are. You forget. The master suddenly appears right behind Alec in full view. The master is in full vampire mode. Her skin is yellowish white with seeping boils. Her hair has a yellowish tinge and is stringy, sickly. Her mouth is filled with razor sharp yellow teeth. Her lips are thin and cracked by dryness. Her eyes are almost reptilian and surrounded by veiny wrinkles. The rest of her face is wrinkled and aged, though her voice is young and smooth, like fine silk. I am not hungry. The master now has a knife placed at Alec's back, jabbing hard enough for him to feel, but not to penetrate. Exterior castle. Growling and stomping sounds come from the darkness of the forest. The soldiers look around but see nothing. Abe is yelling out orders. Abe stops by Trisha, who's beside the paddlefield soldier. Keep this thing aimed at the castle and wait for my signal. You might be our greatest defense right now. It sounds like guardian creatures out there. At least three of them. I don't think I can do this. It can be done. Alec could, but not me. I'm only human. I haven't had enough training. And he took down three at once. None of us could do that. But I was the one who took down the one the night he arrived. You? How? One of those through the eye. And I've never been an expert. You were years ago. Even though you haven't used it in years, I know you could do it again. You could do it so much more than I could ever even begin to imagine. Trisha looks at Abe with a new sense of pride and remains silent as he turns and walks away. Interior council chamber, Alec is standing absolutely still while the master is holding the dagger at his back. The tip is poised. 
deadly even to a half breed like you. What do you want? Direct, to the point, I like that. It would have been nice having you at my side willingly, but you're too good, you're too clean for that. It's a shame. You would have made a great master. Get to the point, beast. Oh, it's a good one. I like that. If it been different, you would have called me mother. But no more. So I wish to make a deal. What kind of deal? Turn around. What do you have in mind? The master smiles bitterly. Exterior, castle. The soldiers have their weapons raised, but none are ready, really, for a fight. Trisha has her bow and arrows ready. Abe is beside the catapult soldier, his own sword out. The elders appear on the battlements, just standing and watching the battle. A moment of silence before the storm. Three guardian creatures suddenly burst out of the darkness and pounce on the nearest soldiers, shredding them instantly, feasting. The other soldiers back away from the creatures, but Trisha takes a step forward, her bow and arrow raised. She takes aim at the nearest creature, but then hesitates. Abe notices this. Don't think, just shoot it now! Without thinking, Trisha re-aims, pulls back on the bow. As the creature looks up, she releases the arrow. The arrow sails through the air and impales the creature right through the eye. The creature takes a few steps back, shakes its head in an attempt to dislodge the arrow, then stumbles and falls with a thud dead. The soldiers cheer. The other two creatures look up at the sounds. The cheering dies away quickly. Trisha reloads her bow as the two creatures step forward towards the group of soldiers. Trisha takes aim at the second time, but stops as a dozen vampires burst from the darkness surrounding the small army. Interior council chamber. Alec and the master face each other, their weapons lowered at their side. The master starts pacing around Alec, with Alec turning in place to keep her in sight. The humans will die. The master stops and looks at Alec, but he doesn't respond. She continues pacing. The oracle, I killed her. The master stops again, looks at Alec, but again, he doesn't respond. Everyone who could have helped you is dead or dying. Have nothing to say to them? Speak your deal or fight. You feel nothing for me. All right, so simple. You're strong, we both know that physically and mentally. All of our powers, plus abilities we'd never have thanks to your human side. That's obvious. Get on with it. You're alone. I am more powerful than you with the blood of a full master running through my veins. It's true. I could just kill you. And use Trisha and wait another 30 years and do this all over again, but I don't want to do this all again. Especially not when you're so much more than anything I could have ever expected. So my offer is to let you live. At what price? Your undying loyalty to me. Be my slave. To use as I wish, as I see fit, for the rest of time. And for that, I'll let you live. And I'll think about letting this little village live as well, under my thumb. Do you accept? They stare at each other. Exterior castle. The vampires are ravaging the soldiers. Some of the humans have already been taken down. The vampires feeding. Some are being chased while others are making an effort to fight back. Abe is defending the catapult, keeping vampires away from it and away from Trisha. Abe slashes at the passing vampire just as Trisha lets an arrow fly. The arrow sails over the battle and hits one of the creatures, bringing it down. The remaining creature stops, becomes intimidated by the battle surrounding it. The young soldier, carrying a small bag Alec had given the oracle, emerges from the forest, stops briefly at the scene before him, then rushes forward towards Abe. The elders notice the young soldier, especially his package. They glance at each other, then all turn in unison and leave, vanishing forever into the darkness. Abe sees the young soldier, he turns to the boy and calls out, and in that moment, a vampire rushes forward and hits Abe right in his wound. Abe cries out in pain, drops his sword, and grabs his wound, which is now bleeding freely. Trisha turns, quickly draws an arrow, and shoots the vampire who dissipates into fog. 
Trisha hurries over to Abe and reaches at him at the same moment as the young soldier. Abe stumbles, is about to fall. Trisha takes hold of him and tries to help him to the ground, but he stops her. No, give it to me. Sir, the old woman, she was gone. There was blood everywhere. Abe takes the bag from the young soldier, exchanges a glance with Trisha, neither say a word, but then Abe grunts in pain. You're hurt, you must shut up. Trisha is shocked, but Abe ignores her. He's focused on the bag, holding it close to his face, whispering something under his breath. After a few moments, Abe pushes Trisha away, takes a stumbling step away. He raises his arm high in the air and the bag clenched in his fist. In the name of all that is holy, I banish thee! In that moment, all the vampires look up in unison and <coughs> burst. A blinding, brilliant ball of light blasts out of the bag. Rays of light penetrate every inch of the clearing and is bright as the sun. It is the sun. Interior council chamber. Alec raises his sword and strikes. The master is shocked as Alec's sword goes through her chest to the hilt and out her back. Both are still standing face to face, but now only the hilt of Alec's sword is all that's separating them. The master grasps Alec's shoulder as the dagger falls. My answer is no. The master grimaces in pain, and then a small smile starts to form. Exterior castle. The vampires shriek away from the light, but then begin to scream from pain as they begin to melt away like thought melts. Hair burns, eyeballs pop, pus oozes. Now, do it now for all that you're worth. Trisha, newly determined, turns away, takes aim at the final creature. She releases the arrow and it flies through the air. The catapult soldier raises his sword and brings it down on the rope holding the arm of the catapult. The rope breaks as Trisha's arrow strikes the last creature through the eyes. The creature falls to the ground as the arm of the catapult rises and sends its cargo towards the castle. Interior council chamber. The master starts to laugh hoarsely. She pushes herself back from Alex, forcing the sword out of herself. Exterior castle. The soldiers watch as the package from the catapult flies through the air towards the castle, gathering speed. Abe collapses to the ground, Trisha going to her knees beside him. Interior chamber. The sword is almost halfway out of the master's chest. She looks up at Alec and smiles. It'll take more than this to kill me, boy. I'm too powerful for that. I know. The master stops, confused. She hadn't expected this response. Exterior castle. The package goes smashing through the boarded up window. Interior castle. The package comes sailing out of the shadows, high near the ceiling. Alec quickly draws his short sword out of the master. She yells out in surprise and stumbles back as Alex strikes up at the package. He hits it just as it passes over the master's head, splitting it open as he steps out of the way. The contents of the package, a clear liquid spills out, falls over the master, drenching her. She reacts instantly, screaming out in pain, falling to her hands and knees. She tries to speak, but can't. Her skin where it's exposed, begins to smoke and burn away, blood and pus oozing out. Despite the pain, she rises up to her knees, remains upright, holding herself up with an effort. Alec stands over the master, his sword in his side, looking down at her with pity. Holy water, essence of garlic, one or two other things I can cop. Very potent brew. Alec and the master's eyes lock for a moment. Her face is melting away, her eyes frying, her expression pained, but she remains silent and strong. There is no doubt that this is the end, and she's asking for him to finish it. Without a word and a sudden hit of sadness, Alec raises his sword, swings it, and smoothly slices off the master's head at the neck, 
finally killing her. He stands there in silence alone as her body dissolves to fog. Exterior castle. The battlefield is silent and bloody. The living soldiers are attending to the wounded and are in shock. Trisha is on her knees beside Abe, who's on his back. His eyes are closed. Brian is nearby watching the two of them, but keeping to the darkness of the forest. Alec emerges from a different part of the darkness. He strolls past the soldiers, ignoring them all. He stops beside Trisha, just looking down at her and Abe, but remains silent. After a moment, Trisha turns her head and glances up at Alec and then back down at Abe. Is I know. The castle? It's clear. Nothing remains. The elders? Gone. Probably won't ever be back. What about the master? He's dead. Brian reacts, snarling a bit, revealing a pair of fangs but remains hidden. With a heavy heart, he turns and leaves, disappearing into the darkness. They're all gone then. They knew to be king. I've no desire to take my father's place. Who then? You'd be next in line. I'm not sure I want that either. The payment for your services. My debt is paid. That's all that's needed. His wish would have been for you to remain here. He still thought of you, and this is your home, and hoped you would have permanently re returned. Yes. It would have been his wish. But you're not the boy he or I remember from long ago. You've been changed. You're partly one of them. Yes, I am. I loved you once when we were young. But I expect you to leave here within a week and never to return. So long as you've got their blood in your veins, I don't think I can ever fully trust you. I understand. And if you come back here uninvited, I'll make sure you never leave alive again. You will be remembered. All of you will. Trisha nods, but doesn't look up again. Alec watches them a moment longer, then turns and vanishes back into the darkness. Exterior cemetery day. It's a bright and sunny day. Off in the middle distance is a hill with a large weeping willow overlooking the cemetery. There are several fresh graves, all filled in except for one. About a dozen mourners, including Trisha and a priest, surround the grave. A closed casket is slowly being lowered into the grave. I'd gladly give up my own life for you to have that freedom, for you to live, for you to have what I cannot give. For that alone, I trust him. Trisha looks up and sees on the hill in the distance, Alex, standing under the branches of a weeping willow. He stays there a moment, watching, then turns away, disappearing into the distance. Trisha watches him go. Fade out.